The NFL season is right around the corner, but I am giving you three players you need to buy high on before you can't buy them at all. The first player on my list is Garrett Wilson. Now he's gotten a ton of hype this offseason. They added Aaron Rodgers to this New York Jets team. And here's the deal. He ranked 92nd in catchable pass rate last season. And now, like I said, he gets Aaron Rodgers. Even if he gets 50% of who Aaron Rodgers was, there is going to be a huge jump in efficiency for Garrett Wilson this year. That could make up for any sort of drop in volume. That's not even a guarantee. He could see even more volume with this Aaron Rodgers led offense and a beat up Reese Hall. With his elite route running and his aggression at the catch point, Garrett Wilson is going to be the dynasty wide receiver three by this time next year. You need to buy him now before you can't buy him at all. Now you're probably wondering, what am I going to trade for a guy like Garrett Wilson, who's ev who everyone's talking about? So I went on the DLF trade finder and I found some options for you for trades that I think are fair trades for a guy like Garrett Wilson right now. Now, in one QB leagues, I saw Jalen Hurts for Garrett Wilson straight up. I'm making that trade. Obviously, having a great QB, one of the upper echelon QB, QBs is an advantage now more than it ever has been. But when you get a guy like Garrett Wilson, especially in a dynasty league, you are still getting an elite production player and a guy who's really, really young. He can do it for the next decade. And I think Garrett Wilson is worth giving up a guy like Jalen Hurts for. Another trade I saw is Jameer Gibbs and Jahan Dotson for Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I love Jameer Gibbs. Dotson, I'm kind of iffy on situationally, um, but I'm okay packaging both those guys for two wide receivers who in Dynasty Leagues, they just have more value. Elijah Moore is on a new team with Deshaun Watson now who could have a breakout season in 2023. I think both those guys in Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore are worth selling Jameer Gibbs and Jahan Dotson for right now. Another trade I saw, the last one we're going to talk about is the 104 and the 106 in 2023 for Garrett Wilson and the 109. I am definitely making that trade. Now, this is in super flex leagues. So the 104 is potentially a quarterback. Potentially, you're getting a guy like Jameer Gibbs, something like that. But I think Garrett Wilson is that good. Plus, you're getting the 109 back. So you're throwing a Quentin Johnson or something like that on your team as well. That's a deal I'm making 10 out of 10 times do those deals for Garrett Wilson right now. The next guy on my list is another guy who is really a one of the upper echelon players at his position, but it's Josh Allen. Now he's a buy high kind of, he's actually seen some of his value depreciate over the last couple months. Really, when you look at Josh Allen, he's coming off a down year where he ended up as the QB two in all of fantasy football. He added Dalton Kincaid in the off season and he retained all of his primary pass catchers from last season and the season prior. When you look at the upper echelon QBs like the Patrick Mahomes and the Jalen Hurts of the world, Hurts might have a little bit of a better supporting cast, but there's a very good chance that he competes to be the QB one overall in 2023 and beyond, and you're getting him cheaper than the other two quarterbacks right now. Here are two trades I saw him go for that I'm making, uh, and one is in Superflex and one is a, in a one QB league. So in Superflex leagues, I saw the 103, a 2025 first, and the 309 for Josh Allen. Now, I don't know if I've ever seen a trade like that in one of my leagues for a Josh Allen type, but again, this is super flex. Maybe someone really believes in CJ Stroud or Bryce Young, or they're just completely trying to, you know, stir the pot with a trade like this, but two firsts and the 309 for Josh Allen in a super flex league, that's a no brainer because he's not someone, I mean, all the top 10 quarterbacks, you're probably not getting for a price like that in most leagues. But if someone in your league is really in on one of these young quarterbacks and you haven't drafted your rookies yet, make that deal right now. Now in a one QB league, I saw Mahomes go for Josh Allen and the 202. I'm fine doing that. I think the step down is definitely there, but it's not significant. Both these guys are going to fight for the QB one overall. Plus you're getting an extra player. You're adding depth to your team, depending how deep your league is. If it's a 10 team, 12 team, you know, it may be even bigger, but that 202 could have really, really nice value in your rookie drafts this year, depending what falls, who, who goes early. You know, there's always those guys that fall to the beginning of the second that you're really happy to get there. So I'm happy adding a 202 to Josh Allen and add some depth to my team. So the last guy that we have to talk about is Bijan Robinson. Now there's not much to say that hasn't been said about Bijan Robinson. Robinson, him, maybe Brees Hall, maybe Jameer Gibbs are like the only running backs if you're not contending that I think you should really care to roster. Otherwise, you can trade them for more uh, long-term assets like a wide receiver, maybe a quarterback, something like that. But Bijan Robinson is 
probably my favorite Falcon to roster right now because he's going to make an impact in 2023 and beyond. Sure, his career shelf life might be a little bit shorter, but Drake London's probably going to be less important as a wide receiver than Bijan Robinson is to the running backs. And same with Kyle Pitts, who I really love. I think he's going to have a bounce back year this year, but I think even Kyle Pitts isn't to the tight end position what Bijan Robinson is to the running back position. He's that good. Three trades I saw for Bijan Robinson that I would do right now. In a super flex league, Anthony Richardson for Bijan Robinson. Now you might be sitting here like, well, duh, he went after Bijan Robinson in my rookie draft, but the hype and the groundswell behind Anthony Richardson is growing like crazy. I do believe in him as a fantasy asset, as a fantasy value. And if he can develop, he could be just an absolute superstar for a very, very long time. But that being said, there's definitely questions, and especially a rookie quarterback. I am go ahead, going ahead and making that swap in the super flex leagues. Maybe if you even want to throw in a late second or a future second to get a Bijan Robinson, I'm doing that deal for sure. The other trades I've got for you are in one QB leagues, Chris Olave in the 114. That's in a 16 team league for Bijan Robinson. I'm doing that. I love Chris Olave, but again, Bijan is Bijan, and I don't think you're going to find value like that, even if you believe Chris Olave is like a top 10 wide, wide receiver in Dynasty. Bijan Robinson. Robinson's a top one running back in Dynasty right now. Now, the other trade I saw is Josh Jacobs and Kenneth Walker. That's a ton to give, but Josh Jacobs is probably going to be uh, a 2023 might be his last year of elite production, depending how the Raiders use him. And he might not have much left after this year. And Kenneth Walker, who's a young, very good player, he's kind of that boom bust type runner, but he's an exciting player for fantasy. He actually might not have the upside that a lot of people think he has anymore. Zach Charbonnet is a real threat to the ceiling of Kenneth Walker. I think both these guys can thrive in the NFL and for fantasy, but Kenneth Walker isn't the asset he used to be. And instead of being, you know, a top five, top 10 dynasty option, he's probably like 15, maybe 17, 18 for Dynasty for me, because there's a lot of things that are capping his value with Zach Charbonnet being there. And of course they added uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, so they might not go as run heavy as people think. All right, let me know any other buy highs you're curious about, any other trades you're curious about, drop the comments below. Make sure to check out my other videos on the 4 for 4 channel and tune in for more coming in the next couple days. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to be kind, do good, and I'll see you next time. Peace.